Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Demco Knives 8020 Compact. It's full thickness, but this is a shorter version of the 8020. Yes, this is, the, this is a US made model, not the uh, Taiwan one. We're gonna talk about that. Um, this one is actually a custom. You can see here by the uh, hand ground blade, but I have no doubt in my mind that there will be an MG or machine ground version of it, which is the, like the, if you're looking at the uh, Demco 8020G10, the $425 one, that's an MG, or the titanium one is an MG, right? These guys cost a lot more money. This was uh, purchased at Blade Show by uh, Amateur Knives on Instagram. Please give him a follow. It's because people have him, like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content or content like this. Um, let me Let me tell you guys this. It seems like the AD20, because a lot of people are going, where can I get this? Where can I get this? They're not available. I will link down in the description Demco Knives at various retailers so that you can sign up for notifications. I would recommend you do that because they're going to be hard to get for a while. But Andrew and Do John Demco obviously know that the Shark Lock is incredibly popular and people really want to get their hands on these. They have now what it seems like uh, the AD20 in Grivery, G10, or Titanium in various blade shapes, blade finishes, blade steels. They have a full thickness compact version, and then apparently they're working on a slim compact uh, American version. So their goal is clearly to get this knife in various forms uh, in the hands of people who want them. I would imagine there will be more. They will, Their availability will increase in the future, but for a while they will still be hard to get a hold of. Um, but I, all I can do is provide you guys with links. So depending on when you're watching the video, you might be able to get one or, you know, sign up for email notifications. I know that people were wondering, so I just figured I'd throw that out there. Um, thanks to my patrons for supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 uh, and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here that this shorter guy is definitely still a chunky knife, but it's closer to the size of the Rat 2 in length. Obviously, presence is another factor there. How about up against the um, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. Um, you can see that it is definitely uh, about exactly the same size as the Bug Out. You know what would be really helpful is if I measured it for you guys. Jeez. Overall length of the um, 8020 Compact, seven and a half inches overall. Blade length is coming in right at three inches. Right there. I know that it, because of the angle, it looks like it's a little bit more I'm telling you, uh, straight on, it's right at three inches. Now, not 2.9, so you got to be careful in areas where you have a three-inch blade lie. It's right there. Blade length on this guy, because this is the shark's foot, I believe they will do this in a clip point or drop point. I have not seen it, right? These shark's foot, uh, shark's foot blades tend to be shorter than the clip point blades. Um, so uh, it's not going to have the same blade length, I think, between the two blade shapes. You have a two point. 6.5, maybe 2.75 inch blade. So ratios, people, that's not going to make you happy. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't really care that much about blade to handle ratio. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Extremely similar uh, in overall length and in uh, hand position, like the ergonomic lines. It's very similar to the Spyderco Para 3. So if you're like me and you enjoy the ergonomics of the Para 3 and the size, it's like that, but this is just a bigger, chunkier, thicker boy. How about up against the full size Demco 8020 Titanium? This is an MG machine ground. You can see by the um, tumbled blade. So there you go. There's the size difference. We'll go ahead and put it up against the um, 80 uh, 20.5. This is the production or Taiwan made 20.5. You can see here it is almost identical. It's definitely identical in overall length to the uh, 20.5. And the um, ergonomic lines are also very similar. But here's what's cool. Look at the um, the full size, the big boy, the eight and a half inch guy up here. Uh, much bigger, more blade. Um, but then look at the uh, position for the, like the ergonomic lines. It's got the same amount. There's more total handle, 
but it has the same exact ergonomic space as the big one. It's the big ones over here, the shorter ones over here. So you can see there is definitely a huge difference in size, but they still gave you just as much room on the handle and they just knock some areas down. I I really like that. I, I think that's really, really cool. Um, and I never noticed that, but it's also true of the 20.5. We have almost exactly the same ergonomic space between the two knives. So um, I'll show you guys right now. This compact is the same thickness as the uh, big boy here. It is, um, I believe it's identical in thickness. So they're both chunky, big chunky blade stocks, right? Here's the 20.5, much thinner. Now, some people are going to prefer that, which I believe is why he's doing a slim version of this. And it wouldn't surprise me if he did a slim version of the um, the bigger guy too, right? Some people are just going to want a thinner blade and a thinner knife all the way around. But this one is full titanium. Yes, I know that Flytanium is working on titanium skills for this guy. So if you're wondering... What's the cheapest and most of, you know, the, the least expensive way to get my hands on one of these things? It's to buy, well, it's hard to find the 20.5, but it's, when they do drop, it's to get your hands on one of those if you, and if you want titanium to, when titanium drops those titanium scales, those aftermarket scales, you buy those. Yeah, it'll be ridiculously expensive to do that. It'll still be less money than the, you know, the American version. If you want the real American thing, then you're going to pay uh, for titanium uh, and an MG, you're going to pay at least $625. That's just what they cost. Secondary market's going to be even higher, right? But that's what you're looking at. All right, let's um, do uh, carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here, it is thick, but it's not like monstrously thick. It's definitely thicker than the Para 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here, Height-wise, it's definitely not as tall as the maximum height on the PM2 or Para 3 because of those humps there. Uh, handle length, it's a little longer than the uh, Para 3, a little shorter than the PM2. Just definitely, definitely thicker. It's just what's going on here. And definitely heavier. Blade stock thickness, I believe it's going to be about 180 thousandths. Let's take a look. Be careful. There we go. Yeah, 100, it says 182. It's probably about 180 thousandths. Weight. Obviously, depending on the handle material, this is going to be different. If they do the compact the same way that they do um, the 8020, then the materials being offered will be grivery, various colors of grivery, G10, various colors, and titanium. So the titanium is definitely going to be the heaviest. Um, I bet this is a six ounce knife. 6.6 6 ounces. How much does the full tie big boy weigh? 7.2 ounces, right? So yeah, um, this is still a super duper heavy knife, right? So if you're big into ratios, you're probably gonna wanna pick one up with like G10 or Grivery. If you're like me and you don't care, right? I don't, trust me, I do not care. I'm about to gush about this thing. So brace for impact. Um, do with all this information what you will. I think, um, oh, we didn't. we need to do the hardware check. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the description. Uh, I believe everything on this knife, I mean, all the body screws are going to be T8. That's a T7, sorry. Yeah. Um, we have the newer style hardware on this guy, by the way. The original hardware looked like this. This is one of the first Thai MG8020s that existed. The old hardware looked like this. The new hardware looks better. Um, just more of a flat uh, head there. These are all going to be, as far as I know, T8. Yeah. And then the pivot is, I'm not even going to do it. It's a T10. Um, I just don't want to, I don't want to be touching this with my tools because this is a nice, this is an expensive knife. Um, but uh, yeah, T8 everywhere, minimal hardware. And then we have the pivot. I have taken apart um, the 8020, uh, my G10 version and um, this guy, and there's a spring back there uh, for the shark lock. Obviously, when you pull this off, there's a good chance that spring is going to go flying. So you need to be careful. <laughs> um, you know, you can almost kind of uh, like, you know, use a cover or take a cloth or something and, and um, basically disassemble it with a um, big cloth or a towel over the top of it so that the parts don't go flying. Other than that, though, it is really easy to take apart and put back together. I really don't have a lot of issues with it. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Wow, the size of this is excellent. 
You guys know that I ranted and raved about the 80 20.5. I just said, well, the materials, right? Off 10A, not a bad blade steel. It's just like not really what we want to see for 150 bucks. Now, I uh, argued that I can understand how they got there because these were small production. It's not on the same scale as Cold Steel or Spider Co. So, you know, people kicking and screaming and just complaining, I want smaller price because not acceptable to me. They're still working within certain parameters, right? It costs them more money to do a smaller batch. It's it's just, you know, they, they're a business. They're going to try to make money, bring something to the table that people want, right? So while Grivery and Austin A was not, you know, what everybody wanted, you know, could they have brought the price back a bit? Maybe so. But I think all the crying and screaming and complaining is a little bit like, whoa, calm, calm down, you know? Um, but... I did love this. I uh, am almost certain that we will see different, um, you know, uh, blade materials and a different scale. Honestly, you know, if they bump this, if they change the blade steel to 20 CV and then we had uh, G10 scales, you know, a lot of people would say, yeah, I'll pay 200 bucks for that, right? There's always going to be people complaining, but yeah, a lot of people would find that that's a better or more preferable uh, value there. But anyways, the main thing here is that the AD 20.5 is an excellent pocketable design. This compact version is basically this, except it's the USA version and it's in full thickness. Um, this is exactly what I would prefer. In fact, um, I, I said this when I unboxed this, I, I will own this knife exactly. This is so close to, when I did that series about the greatest, um, you know, uh, EDC knife of all time, um, you know, I concluded that an ambidextrous lock, um, and something around this size, right? And then, it, like, it's, it's funny that I, there are a lot of elements in this, truthfully, this guy that I was talking about. But then, combine that with the series I did on, you know, my own, like, the quest for the perfect folding knife, like, for me, the, that old series about Excalibur. This also checks a lot of Excalibur boxes, too. So, yeah, um... And if you don't know, if this is your first time seeing the shark lock, yeah, this is like the best lock in existence. You're going to hear people saying things like, oh, well, it sticks up right here and it's not the best ergonomic. That's almost nothing. Like, if you choke up on this, can you feel it a little bit? If you're specifically holding it like this, can you feel it a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Not very much. Um, if you're going to be using it that hard to where it's, it's going to be like, rubbing up against your hand, you're probably going to be wearing gloves. You can also hold it like this, or like this, or like this, and this is not in the way. Um, so I think that's people just, there's a lot of people complaining just to complain. You know, when something like this is really, really popular, you're going to find, you're going to have, it's like the whole spider Spyderco shaman and the nub thing. People are like, hmm, I don't like it when things are popular, so I need to find something wrong and, you know, dig a hole infinitely on it. Some people are going to be more or less bothered by that, but truthfully, it is only in this specific position, uh, hand position, that you're going to feel that. And if you're going to use it that hard, you're probably going to be wearing gloves, right? But it is a thing, just pointing it out. Outside of that, you have the strength of the triad lock. Yes, the strength of the triad lock. Um, but ease of manipulation is head and shoulders over the triad lock. This is much easier to manipulate. You can use the hole for the reverse flick. Some of these are going to have... Um, the hole and some of them aren't, right? Um, I would always prefer that that hole be there. It's much easier. I, I think that I, I would prefer to use that over the thumb studs. In fact, I don't know that the thumb studs need to be there. Um, I like how they look, but they're kind of in the cutting path. I, I think I would, you know, I, I think I would prefer that they do a version with just the hole and no thumb studs. I think that that would be excellent, but you know, this is how it is on this guy. The hole is smaller. You'll notice that uh, it's definitely smaller than on the larger one. It's also, it's fatter, but it's also shorter than on the um, AD uh, 20.5. I think that it's a better idea to have it taller like this and not as long. I think it's, well, I just failed there, but I think that you, most people are going to have better, if you have thicker fingers, you're going to have better access to that than if it's this long skinny thing, right? But I like how it looks. Thumb studs are also in an excellent place. It's very easy to deploy. And yeah, this thing makes the most satisfying, like the sounds of the shark lock are so satisfying. But it's also, not as not only is it clicky and fun to play with, but it's also extremely functional and it's just, 
this is the type of thing that makes cutting tasks, like when you need to get your knife out to cut something, the shark lock makes it as simple as possible to go from pulling the knife out of your pocket, deploying the knife, using the knife, uh, disengaging the lock, and putting the thing back in your pocket, right? It is fun to sit around and play with, but when you don't want to be focused on the knife and you want to be focused on the task at hand, the shark lock lets you do that. Get it out, make the cut, put it away, and be done with it. This. Awesome. 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 Ergonomics. Great. Just as good as the big one because they're literally the same. You can choke up, choke back, whatever you want. I like the shark's foot blade. Um, I like these types of blades for EDC. As you can see, this guy gets a lot of love. This guy gets a lot of use. I like this for doing draw cuts, digging into packages. I like the aesthetics of the clip point blade on these guys and the drop point blades that I've seen. I like the aesthetics of those better. Um, and if you're going to be doing more slicing stuff, you know, maybe that blade shape is going to be better for you. For a lot of what I do with a knife day to day, this blade shape makes way more sense to me. I do not care about blade to uh, handle ratio nearly as much. So being able to get a full purchase on this guy and having options is much more important uh, than having a blade that matches the handle length. Now, Aesthetically, that is going to bother some people. And again, like I said, if you don't like how short the blade looks compared to the handle, trust me when I say the clip points and the drop points, um, they, they really are longer. I don't know why. It's probably because of how the blade um, interacts with it. Well, it is. You can see there, if they elongated this, it would run right into the standoff. But because the clip point blade is curved, it gives them more room uh, for the blade to come down and not run into that standoff or curve over the top of it. So that's why, right? This does not bother me. A lot of people are bothered by this area too. Uh, you're either going to be bothered by it or you're not going to be. It doesn't really bother me, but okay. You know, I mean, some people are going to look at this and say it just looks horrible. It just looks hideous, right? Um, but functionally, it's wonderful. Can you pinch yourself in here? I don't know. Not really. have to try. Um, but functionally, yeah, everything is in exactly the right place. This is the type of knife that I kind of like these shorter little chunky tanks, right? Because this knife is going to be every bit as capable as the big guy outside of cutting into something that is thicker than the, um, if you need to cut all the way through it, if it's too thick, then you just need a longer blade, right? Um, this guy for being so thick is shockingly slicey down at the <laughs> This is just ridiculously sharp. It's unbelievable. You can see the taper here. Wow. Right? Definitely thick. Definitely still uh, a big boy knife. And in a uh, big boy steel as well. I think we saw that earlier. It's in uh, 3V. Um, so Demco works with, S, as far as I know, S45VN, 3V, 20CV, uh, crew wear. And I believe, as far as the last live stream, um, people were telling me that he's maybe thinking about Magna Cut. <laughs> Talk about an ultimate combination. Wow. Um, so, yeah. And with various thicknesses of blade, I just looked on his Instagram the other day. You should follow Andrew and John Demko on Instagram. Uh, they are, they, they do, uh, they are making some slims. They're making some skinnier ones. I, I, forgive me if I'm getting, if I'm not getting all of this information correct. There's a lot going on. They're making a lot of different forms of this knife. So people who want the big ultra, you know, thick guy, you can get it. You know, maybe at some point the big guy, but just not quite so thick. Uh, they're doing the compact, full thickness. Uh, they're doing it this, this slim of either the compact or the big guy right now. I'm not really sure. Then they have the less expensive production version of this. Eventually, there will probably be, you know, this in different materials. I'm sure we'll continue to see different materials for this guy, right? They have the machine ground, uh, cheaper US versions in Grivery and G10 or the titanium ones. And then they have these custom ones, right? If you're wondering how much this knife specifically costs, this is on the mega top tier. You're looking at a hand ground blade, so a custom, uh, in titanium. This is probably a knife that starts off at $1,000 or $1,100. But the machine ground titanium one is going to come in at about $625, right? You're, just, you're, you're going to pay more money for someone to take the time to hand grind the blade. It's just factually the way it's going to be. Nice chamfering all the way around. Very comfortable. 
Uh, same thing as the other one. I love how they uh, do the pivot. Uh, it says Demco Knives and then Wampum, Pennsylvania on the other side. Very cool. Shark Lock, wonderfully easy to use. It's just that there's the joy of using the Shark Lock. It, it, you, anybody who owns this will tell you this is the mo this is the fidget king. It is the king of fidget factor. I like how the uh, standoffs look. Does he? There's pocket lens in here. Does he actually carry this? Wow, that's impressive. Um, but uh, yeah, standoffs back here. The uh, clip is the only thing for me that leaves something to be desired. I do not like lanyard holes that are prioritized over the pocket clip. It really bothers me. There's a decent amount of this. It doesn't bother me as much on the big guy because the percentage of the total amount of knife that's actually in your pocket, right, by percentage, the ratio, right, is much better here. This is almost what I'd call shallow carry just compared to the rest of the knife. I really wish, if he wants to keep this clip, fine, but I think it would be cool if he did another clip, like an optional clip that was maybe bypassed this lanyard hole uh, and was deep carry, right? Or maybe had like a cutout, kind of like how um, MXG does it with the uh, Spyderco Para 3, where the, the lanyard hole is still there, but the clip bypasses it so that you, you, you can carry it deeper if you want to. I also don't like how the bill angles down. That makes it a little bit hard to get it in and out of your pocket. I want it to swoop and come up continuously. This ramp at the end of this clip is much better for getting in and out of the pocket. It's the only thing that's going to slow you down getting this thing out or in, you know, and getting it to the point where you're either using it or putting it away. But okay. And the clip is uh, titanium as far as I know. There are marks on this. He carries this. That's awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I believe the clip is titanium. Let me um, let me confirm that real quick. I honestly couldn't remember. Where did my... Was my magnet gone? Wow, what a professional knife reviewer. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call, say, it professional. Um, it's actually steel. Okay, I didn't know that. Is mine also steel? Yeah, it is. Okay, I <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, but it, yeah, the steel. It looks like the hardware is going to be steel, and uh, the scales in this case are going to be titanium. That's fine. Clip looks good. Everything looks good. I'm huge fan of stone washed textured titanium. This is beautiful to me. I will always prefer this exactly this over anything else. If I have the option to get a uniform diamond pattern on titanium and you know a whole monochromatic look, I will opt for that over anything else 99% of the time. This is gorgeous. I like a tumbled blade better than a satin blade, but I can appreciate that this is a hand ground blade and that's why it looks like that. Some people are definitely going to prefer that look um, over the tumbled blades. I think um, the uh, compact version of this is uh, would be a more ideal EDC knife for me day to day. And truthfully, the ultimate version of this, now if it were me, I'm gonna tell you guys, when I buy this, because I will, I will buy one as soon as they are available, um, it'll be exactly this, exactly this with a tumbled blade. I want that full thickness. It's plenty sharp and I just, for me, in sort of a novelty way, I just enjoy the the full thickness, right? I think the most ideal version of this knife for a lot of people is going to be exactly this, but closer to the thinness of this guy, right? Or the production AD 20.5 in a better blade steel and the titanium aftermarket skills from Flytanium or G10 or something like that, right? The most ideal version is going to be a thinner version of this, but this is a home run. If you are big into ratios, right, this isn't going to be for you, um, or if you just don't like how it looks. But as far as function goes, it's like the boundary, like, you know, the, it, I keep thinking like ultimate knives, like ultimate perfect knives already exist, and they do. This is just a little bit more ultimater and a little bit more perfecter <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, I think the, I think 2022 is going to be a huge year for the Shark Lock. I think that they are massively ramping up production, really trying to get more and more and more of these out. And if you're watching this on the, the time that I uploaded it, right? If you're watching it on the day that I uploaded it or within a month, I think 
I don't think it takes a genius to figure this out. I think that um, they they have saved a lot of their stuff to send to retailers as we approach the holiday season. I think you guys should be paying extra attention right now to your favorite retailers if you're trying to get your hands on these. Um, I have GP Knives, uh, Blade HQ, and DLT Trading linked right down below. All three of them in the past have received the American 8020s and the uh, Taiwanese. 8020.5. So I would sign up for email notifications there and various other retailers. Doesn't matter if I have them or not. If you're trying to get your hands on these, that's what you got to do and constantly go back and check, right? I don't, I know it's not, it's not foolproof, but that's what you got to do. The 8020 uh, compact is excellent. The pocket clip still bugs me, right? Might be too thick and too heavy for some people and the ratios are definitely not going to be um, the most, you know, it's not going to make everybody happy. But for me, this is wonderful. They they did everything exactly right. They did not short they didn't just shorten this exact shape up. They kept that ergonomic room. They let you have that, you know, what what's great about this is just feeling like you can put your hands where you want and control the knife the way that you want to control it. Oh, man. If I can get my hands on one of those, that is the only thing that I will carry for a very long time. That is very very cool. I love this. So, uh, I typically don't review customs, but I just, because of, you know, what they're doing with the AD20, that's really what this is, is more of a review. Um, massive, two massive thumbs up for the compact AD20. I, I love that. I think this is one of the, uh, you know, the Demco AD20 is one of the best American knives that you can buy right now, but it's so expensive. How can you say that? Yeah. Even considering it's that expensive. Now, do you need to spend that money to get a great knife? No, you can definitely spend less money and get a great American knife. Do I still think the Demco 8020 and Compact 8020 are some of the best American knives that have ever been made? Hands down, yes, absolutely they are. It is not hype. It's the real deal, right? I mean, you can disagree with me. People will. But if you want to know what my opinion is, no, it's not hype. These are real. <laughs> These are awesome. Absolutely one of the greatest American knives that's ever been made. Okay, I think that's going to be pretty much it. 26 minutes. Wow, that was long. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Uh, thanks again to Amateur Knives for sending this in. Make sure you follow him. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. They'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.